Resisting the new inquisition, that's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, I'm certain J.K. Rowling would recoil at being compared to Donald Trump. The lifelong feminist holds views antithetical to his. But when the far left in the U.K. started a petition to ban Trump from traveling there, she, a true liberal, drew a line. I find almost everything that Mr. Trump says objectionable. I consider him offensive and bigoted, but he has my full support to come to my country and be offensive and bigoted there. Whether she likes it or not, Trump and she have something important in common. They're both threats to the new inquisition. You know, the self-appointed enforcers of progressive conformity. The anti-free speech radicals who are threatened by anyone, and I mean anyone, who boldly expresses views that conflict or challenge their own. Now, just as it would have been a lot easier, let's face it, for Trump to steer clear from politics in 2015 or retire after 2020, it would have been far easier for J.K. Rowling to back away from her views on transgenderism. I absolutely knew that if I spoke out, many people who would love my books would be deeply unhappy with me. I believe absolutely that there is something dangerous about this movement and it must be challenged. For believing that a man is a man and a woman is a woman, she's been called a vicious transphobe and subject to relentless criticism from many, by the way, of her former friends. And even when Scotland passed a so-called anti-hate speech law, instead of shutting up, she ramped it up, daring Scottish authorities to arrest her. Now, police undoubtedly wanting to sidestep the firestorm where the Harry Potter author actually charged, announced earlier today that she didn't violate the law, which says that the prosecution need only prove that a remark was likely rather than intended to offend members of classes defined by things like age, disability, faith, sexual orientation, transgender identity, or being intersex. Okay. Well, so-called hate speech would be prosecuted if merely a reasonable person would consider it threatening or abusive. It's not a broad, <laughs> broad standard at all. Now, even the Liberal Guardian newspaper admitted that the law was problematic, noting that nothing prevents it from being applied even for comments made in the privacy of your own home. This has echoes of Mao's cultural revolution, nor is there protection for schools, clubs, private institutions. In effect, the law proposes a potentially massive extension of police discretion into the private and social life of Scotland. Now, this is when maybe you're thinking, who cares? This is Scotland. I love Scotland, but who cares what they do? This could never happen here. We have the First Amendment. Really? Now, when Trump questioned the impartiality of the judge in his hush money case, as we talked about, the judge simply slapped a gag order on him. If members of our military question the outcome of the 2020 election and maybe posted about it or empathized in any way with the J6 defendants, they probably needed to submit to anti-extremism training. The truth of the matter is, we need your help. I'm talking, of course, about extremism and extremist ideology. It concerns me to think that anyone wearing the uniform would espouse these sorts of beliefs, let alone act on them. But they do. How many times have you heard college students say they feel like they can't be honest in their essays, so instead they write to validate or echo a professor's political views? When schools start endorsing or promoting specific ideologies, that's just unfair. You have to conform to their ideologies and their beliefs. I mean, these teachers are pushing their political and personal beliefs onto their students. If you don't conform, you'll fail. And RFK Jr. knows all too well how intolerant today's Democrats can be. After all, they did everything they could do to keep him off the ballot. And they launched a campaign to bankrupt and jail Trump. President Biden is the first candidate in history, the first president in history 
that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech. The greatest threat in democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but if you have a government that can silence its opponent, it has license for any atrocity. Look, for decades now, the left has been at war with free speech. Elites will go to the barricades to protect pornography, but when it comes to the political or cultural expression that offends the neo-Stalinists on the left, well, they'll use any weapon at their disposal to drive you into submission. Radical progressives spare no one, not even beloved liberals like Rowling or music legends like Eric Clapton, whom they effectively excommunicated for his outspokenness against the COVID shot. NBC called it his sad final act. The minute I began to say anything about the lockdown here and my, my concerns, uh, I was labeled as a Trump supporter in America, and uh, I got some pretty heavy feedback. So did Van Morrison. Well, nothing that distinguished doctors, of course, didn't experience. If they question the need for lockdowns, they question mandates, they question masks, they were persecuted because of their views. They never stopped, though, fighting regardless of the consequences. Now, like Rowling, most of these people weren't political. They were simply pro-free expression, expressing themselves. In the case of the doctors, they were expressing their need for scientific inquiry to be free and, frankly, critical. But they got a quick education in how vicious the new left had become. There is zero, and I mean zero, tolerance for disagreement, certainly no debate. And you deviate from the orthodoxy, yeah, you will suffer. It's far more puritanical, far more repressive than anything you will find at most megachurches in the South. Those brave enough to stand against these neo-Bolsheviks should be an inspiration to everyone who cherishes freedom. Now, you don't have to agree with Donald Trump to believe that the lawfare being waged against him is one step closer to tyranny. Rowling and Trump are doing their part. Now it's up to the rest of us to do ours. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.